In terms of how we should uh, go about IBIS, I think we need to distill the information set so it's not complicated. We ask three basic questions before a procedure. How much plaque are we covering? Do we need to modify it? Is there calcium there? And then how big should the stents be? There are three actions in terms of finding your landing zones for your stent, assessing the morphology, and taking the measurements of what the distal and proximal reference should be. In fact, the minimal area of the lesion is relatively superfluous. So once we've established where the landing zones for the stent should be, uh, we are seeking to demonstrate that really there's an area of normal uh, vessel, ideally. Uh, if there's not, the plaque burden is minimum uh, or minimal and less than 50%. And we don't want to be landing stents in areas of heavy disease. So that's a, a key thing. And these are all fairly simple practice steps. But actually what we don't realize is that the angiograph is pretty terrible at telling us what normal is. Uh, and we very much underestimate where, where the disease burdens are. So typically when we do ibis based standing, we go a bit longer, uh, but it, it's doing that for a good reason. In terms of plaque morphology, the key question really in terms of your procedure is calcium uh, and making sure that you can modify uh, the lesion if it needs it and that vascular compliance is restored before a stent goes in. Uh, in terms of the vessel size, I think it's crucial that we size our stents well. It is to the lumen in the landing zone. We're not at trying to match stents to the EEL. And I think there's a little bit of confusion maybe from some of the old OCT practice around uh, scaffolds and so on. Uh, but we, we need to stick to lumens and not to EELs, particularly not in segments of heavy disease where you get positive vascular remodeling. Uh, and then after the stent goes in, three very simple questions again. Is there geographic miss? Uh, have we got uh, an edge dissection, apposition throughout the stent length, and then is there adequate stent expansion? So basic information sets, nothing fancy. You don't need an encyclopedic knowledge of every grayscale IVIS that's ever been performed. Uh, in terms of what the landing zone hopefully looks like, it's nice and healthy, and we don't have an edge dissection, as is demonstrated in, in the right-sided image here, uh, with, with associated uh, hematoma. That position, I think, is very clearly understood with 60 megahertz IVIS. Uh, in the middle image, you can see significant malapposition, and we shouldn't confuse ourselves around uh, the presence of side branches and misinterpret that, that equals malapposition when it isn't. Uh, and in terms of the stent areas, it's luminal dimensions beyond the stent and also proximal to the stent, and then it's the minimal stent area as a, a fraction of that. I think for very long stented segments, we do need to take a few measurements and make sure that we make sensible choices, and that's fine. But what we certainly don't want to see is substantial under-expansion of stents, um, particularly where they're landing in heavy areas of disease. So that translates to bad outcomes for your patients.